Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's Brood. These are certainly exciting times in the Bloom home. Sarah, uh, Sally, is engaged to Sidney Schiffbane, and Mama Bloom just can't help but be excited. Here she is, just answering the phone. Hello? Hello, yes, you got the right number. Yeah, I'm surprised, too. Who is it? Oh, Mrs. Rifkin. I didn't recognize your voice. It sounded so plain. I've been trying to call you up for a week. Oh, you have? Atlantic City, huh? <laughs> Ritz Hotel. <laughs> Ain't you elegant? Did you hide about mine, Sally? Oh, you ain't. I'm so glad. Sally's engaged to a Mr. Sidney Schiffman. Well, sure he gave her a ring. Papa paid $200 for it. You must know the Schiffman. His uncle Mo's in the racket business. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Who, Sidney? Well, he's in the clothing business with Papa. They've been engaged eight days. Oh, sometime in a month or so. you get an invitation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so happy she's getting such a nice fella. And smart, smart as a viper. Say, so he's getting a nice girl too. Mine Sally could have married anybody. No, no, she's not here now. She's at cooking school. Yeah. Today they're taking up ham, so she went to our movie. Mm-hmm. Well, come over and see us sometime, huh? Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, Ma. Ever since Sally's been engaged, you spent the entire day at the pool. Can I help you if people call up? But you don't have to talk for an hour to everybody. Yes, yeah, a darling. Why can't I get a little pleasure out of Sarah's engagement? But you don't have to call up everybody in town and tell them. The more telephone calls I make, the more presents she gets. <laughs> Honest, though, we have the voice luck. Look at Mr. Shapira. Her husband's in the jewelry business. If she wants to send a present, she picks it right out of stock. Besides getting it wholesale, they get rid of something they couldn't sell. Oh, that's not a bad idea either. Mm. And Mrs. Phillips, her husband's in the furniture business. They can also work off something they had in stock for a long time. Remember that lamp she gave Blanche Silver? I bet they had it in stock 12 years. Well, what's that got to do with us? Well, look at the business Papa's in. We can't send knee pants as a wedding present. It wouldn't look nice. Oh, wedding presents aren't everything. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Then you get married. For all the trouble you're going to have, you might just as well get a few presents. Not that you know after you got the presents that you're going to keep them. Well, what do you mean? You remember what happened to Lily Myers? No, what? She got engaged to our fellow from out of town, and everything went along fine until her father looked up his credit rating. And then what happened? After her father looked him up, he made her break the engagement. Well, then what did they do? She had to give back all the presents. Oh. And believe me, I should never stir from this spot if she didn't have over $2,000 for it. Here I stand joking with you, and I got a million things to do. What do you mean, joking? Yes, sir, did you think I was serious? What good are wedding presents, anyhow? They always give you something you can't use. Last week, I went to a wedding, and they had 21 cake knives, and both the bride and the groom are on a diet. Well, what I meant about talking was not to brag about Sidney, Ma. What's the matter with Sidney? He's worked for Papa already a week. Has Papa complained? No, but he hasn't said anything good about him. What you want Papa to say? Well, you know, Papa, if he was terribly pleased with Sidney, he'd do a little raving himself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But, say, after all, Sidney's only been in the business one week. You can't expect him already to be a knee pants wizard. Oh, here uh, comes Papa. Oh, it's a little early. I wonder if I bring him home so soon. Hello, Mama. Hello, Jay. Yes, Why are you home so early, darling? Yes, Sam dropped me off in the car. Uh-huh. Give me your hat and coat. I'll hang it no, up. No, no, no. I'll hang it up myself. 
When he comes back, ask him about Sydney. I'll do it. Mm, there, Sarah. Uh, Sally will be home any minute. I think she stopped to pick up Sydney. Sydney? I have to have him here tonight after having him all day. Jack, what's the matter? Sydney is driving me crazy. Four days he's been there and already the shipping clerk has quit. What has Sydney got to do with the shipping clerk? What is this? Sydney's got to do with everything. Already he's going to put in new systems. Uh-huh, a deficiency expert, huh? You mean efficiency? Call it efficiency. what you please. I don't want one. What did he do, Jim? What didn't he do? What didn't he do, then? What he didn't do is what he should have done. And what he did, he should have left alone. Such ideas I never heard in all my life. What you mean? Mama, we are a plain business. We make up boys' knee pants and we sell them. Sure. That's all there is to the business. All my life I've been in it and we did it that way and it was all right. We made up a good line of pants. We sold them at a fair price. We made a little profit. We were satisfied and our customers were satisfied. Well, so what now? Last month they came in Sydney. He's been there now one week and already he has discovered that everything we've been doing for 10 years is all wrong. How can it be all wrong? If you've been doing it for 10 years that way and it's been going all right, then it can't be wrong, Jake. Mm, you don't know Sydney. Sydney could get a job with the government and in two days after he was there, he would have them making dollar bills better than they are now and selling them for 75 cents. Well, Jake, remember, Sydney's young. He's a young fool. Now he wants us to take stock. Take stock? Yeah, thank goodness now we are busy. We got a lot of orders to get out. What does he want you to do? He wants everybody should quit getting out orders and start counting everything, and he won't be happy till he knows how many buttons we got in stock. Well, what good does this do, this taking stock? Don't ask me, Mom. I am not Sydney. All right, what good does Sydney say it does? Sydney says you can't tell whether or not you're making money unless you take stock. Jake, maybe he's right. Maybe Becky, he's... ten years ago, Sam and I started in this business. We each put up $2,000. For ten years, we have lived off the business. We got money in the bank. We got a floor full of merchandise, piece goods, and machinery all paid for. Up to last Monday, I thought we were doing fine. Well? Now, I discovered just because I don't know exactly how many buttons we had last Tuesday at 4 o'clock, we are losing money. Jake, would it hurt you to take stock? I don't want to take stock. Sydney's bringing you maybe new ideas. The old ideas are good enough for me. Still, he may have one good idea. Even if it was good, I wouldn't like it. All right, Jake, all right. Why don't you send him out selling? I did. Did you bring back orders? Oh, yeah, he brought back orders. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you see, you see, maybe that's what he is, he's a salesman. But I didn't tell you what kind of orders he brought back. Well, what kind of orders did he bring back? Listen, Mama, Levy Cohn and Levy on East 9th Street called up and said we should send over a salesman. They want to buy some blue serge pants. So what happened? This was Tuesday, so like a fool, I didn't know I sent over Sydney. Didn't he bring back a order? Oh, sure, sure he did. He brought back an order from McDonald's and Company of West 175th Street for 10 dozen waiters' jackets. Ah, but, Jack, you don't make waiters' jackets. Did that bother Sydney? He said we should make them. Oh, well, one mistake anybody can make. One mistake. Thursday, Sam and I went out to lunch, and a man comes in from Washington. Do you think Sydney sold them knee pants? Did he? He sold them a hundred army uniforms. And when I explained to him we didn't make army uniforms, he said that was a good business, too. He said in case of war, who would wear knee pants? Honest, I'm getting afraid. Every time Sidney goes out, I don't know what he's going to sell next. I wouldn't be surprised the next time he goes out selling to see him come back with an order for handmade circus tents. What did you do with the orders, Jake? Are the people good? The people are A number one, and that's just the trouble. I don't know what to do with the orders. In one week, he sold over $4,000 worth of merchandise we don't make. It shows he can sell. But why doesn't he sell knee pants? Why does he say he don't sell them? He says anybody can sell knee pants. He wants to sell something hard. Now he wants us to enlarge, to take the floor upstairs, put in more machinery and make everything. Ladies' coats, army uniforms, fancy vests, anything. After all, somebody makes those things, and if he can get the orders, why don't you? Mama, I am a knee pants manufacturer, not a dressmaker. All right, don't get excited, Jake. Where is Sidney now? Sidney, he didn't want to come home now. I left him in the office. What was he doing? What was he doing? He was talking to five men. To five men? What was he talking Mama, about? I don't know. He was in my private office and he had the door locked. Uh-huh. Maybe it was five customers. They were not customers. How do you know they weren't customers? After ten years in the business, I know what a customer looks like. Then what could he be talking to them about? Don't ask me, Mom. If it was Sam, I would know. But Sydney, I've known only one week. And already I can tell you that with Sydney, there are no rules. Well, we'll soon find out enough. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Only one thing I know. Whatever he was talking about, it wasn't knee pants. And whatever he is doing, it means trouble for me. Give him a chance. Jake. Give him a chance and he'll drive me out of business. Uh, maybe you're looking at the black lining. Say, he couldn't be wrong all the time. Maybe this time he's doing something smart. Becky, I hope you are right. But I'm afraid of that boy. He's got too many ideas. Oh, me. What can he be doing? The later he stays, the more trouble there'll be. He'll be home in a minute and we'll find out. I'm getting so every time I don't see him for five minutes, I'm scared to ask him what he's been doing. Say, what time are we going to eat? I've got a date for tonight. He'll eat as soon as Sally and Sydney come, darling. Say, I just heard the car come up. Has he got the car? Yeah, he's using our car. Oh. He says I can ride with Sam. Oh, that's a fine... Hello, folks. 
Are we late? Oh, no, Hello, no, Daddy. no. It's all right, Sarah. But I wish you'd get home after this by 6 o'clock. You know Papa gets hungry. Mm, tonight, Mama, I'm not hungry. We would have been home earlier, but Sidney had a big conference. You see, you see, I told you. What did he have a conference about? Go ahead and tell them, Sidney. I think it's wonderful. Oh, there's a couple of little details I have to work oh, out. Yeah, I can't understand you being bothered by little details. Oh, that's <laughs> what the machinery man said. The machinery man? What's the matter? Did some of our machinery break? No, no, the machinery man I ordered the new machinery from. He said I had... You ordered new machinery? $16,300 worth. <laughs> that's not bad. The man said... Sydney, that... Sydney, for who did you order this machinery? Why, for the firm, of course. You ordered machinery for the firm? Now, don't worry, Pop. It's all attended to. Sydney signed the order, and he went upstairs with the real estate man and showed him just where he wanted the floor break so they could install the machinery. How says? Has the factory got an upstairs, Jay? Sure, I just leased the two upper floors. I got them for $9,000 a year by making a 10-year lease. It was did lucky you left a couple of blank signed checks. What did you do with the checks? I gave them each a deposit of $1,000. A deposit of a... Th- a, a th- <laughs> Sidney. Sidney, please. I'm asking you. Do me a favor. Before I drop dead, will you explain to me what are you doing up there? Now, listen, Dad, listen. If we're going into the uniform business, Uh, we've got to go into it right. No petty larceny business for uh, me. Wait a minute. Who is going into the uniform business? We are. Do you realize how many soldiers there are in this country alone? Do you realize that every state has a national guard? Do you realize that every high school in this United States of ours has a cadet corps that averages in number 212 and three quarters men? Look, I... I... Do you realize that the average life of a uniform is four months and five days to say nothing of all the foreign countries that all use from one to ten uniforms per man? But I... I... To say nothing of officers' uniforms. Then there's postman's uniforms, streetcar conductors, elevator boys, bell boys, ushers. I, uh, uh, I think ushers have the prettiest uniforms. Sure, there's millions to be made, Dad. Don't tell me you hate money. Get me an aspirin, somebody. I'm seasick. You're going to make Vader's coats too, aren't you? Sure. We're going to make every kind of clothing in the world, except one. What's that? Knee pants. 